What is going on, Heat Nation? It is your boy, Ernest, and I am excited to be back with another Miami Heat Talk video. Guys, I hope you are all living happy, positively, with nothing but love in your hearts, you guys. Um, I'm excited because off we go on another Miami Heat Talk adventure. Before we get started, you guys, take a moment, hit the like button, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to get all my latest updates. Um, I'm excited, man. Like I said, we got a lot to talk about. Um, Heat's offseason's been a little slow. Uh, I say this every time, but you guys know things have been crickets right now. Uh, but there's a few things I want to discuss. First and foremost, congratulations are in order. As you guys see, I got the retro Tim Hardaway jersey on. And for most of you that know, I'm wearing this to support Tim Hardaway because this past weekend, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Much congratulations on Tim Hardaway, you guys. Uh, for those of you that don't know his career, uh, he started with Golden State, a part of Run TMC with Mitch Richmond and uh, Chris Mullen. Got traded here in 96. Uh, was not able to win a championship, unfortunately, but um, he and Alonzo Mourning put on a show together here in Miami. Um, they brought re um, ba Basically, they brought relevance here in Miami. Uh, Miami wasn't really known for being a basketball town. Tim Hardaway and Alonzo Mourning changed that, so it's great to see both of them in the Hall of Fame. Much deserved. Um, but I like what Tim Hardaway was actually talking about recently. Um, for those of you that don't know, he actually mentioned Kyle Lowry recently. And he was talking about Kyle Lowry getting a lot of hate about his weight problem this past year. Tim Hardaway was actually going through something recent in his career in Miami. Um, he was actually under a contract where he had to hit a weight limit to make his certain money. So he knows what that's like, you know, especially with the heat culture, though. That diet is pretty crazy. They want you at a certain body fat percentage, and they test you every week with that. So they're very serious about that. Um, so he supports Kyle Lowry. And for those of you that have seen lately, Kyle Lowry's looking nice, man. Um, he is looking in great shape. You know, he's not going to have the out of shape problems going into this season. He looks good mentally. He seems healthy. He seems healthy physically. So that's a great thing. I've said it here before, and I will say it again, you guys. I look at Kyle Lowry and Victor Oladipo to both have a breakout season. I'm excited, you guys. We got training camp coming in two weeks. Basketball season starts next month. Miami Heat basketball is coming. I'm excited. I'm happy. But I have a problem with these so-called Miami Heat fans. A lot of these bandwagon fans, a lot of these fans that started jumping on the bandwagon back in 2010 when LeBron James came here, okay? A lot of these fans who like to talk nothing but shit about the Miami Heat, a lot of these fans who contradict themselves a lot of time, that make no sense. Now, for the most part, the people that watch my channel, most of my, uh, majority of my subscribers, you guys think the same way I do. We're very positive. We support the Miami Heat. We don't focus on negativity. We focus on things that are happening, moving forward, and what's best for the Heat. But there are some of these fans that are never happy. These fans who, when Donovan Mitchell was traded to Cleveland and Tyler Hero came out and said his little thing in Twitter, I forgot the post, uh, but it was something kind of like, all right, let's move forward. I'm here. All these fans just started talking shit about, oh, you need to learn how to play in the playoffs and we're not going to give you these max extensions. You guys need to remember, fans are a part of a reason why players decide to stay and leave. You know, a lot of you don't know this, but in 1996, Shaquille O'Neal left the Lakers. You know that, but one of the reasons you don't really know is because he read in a newspaper article that 90% of fans that voted didn't think he deserved max money. That stuck. Tyler Hero sees this stuff from Miami Heat fans. It can stick also. Now, I'm not saying it's a big deal, but these fans just need to shut up. These bandwagon fans have no idea what they're talking about. And I need to vent this because if this is you, if you are the fan that just sits there, looks in Twitter, looks in what we do, and just says, he did nothing this offseason, you are the problem. Not us. You are the problem. Let me explain why. These bandwagon fans are pissed off because we didn't get Kevin Durant. We didn't trade for Kevin Durant. Okay, I understand your frustration. But these are the same fans that said, oh, you didn't get Kevin Durant, but you let P.J. Tucker go. What the fuck? Okay, we couldn't bring P.J. Tucker back and get Kevin Durant because P.J. Tucker is an idiot. We offered P.J. Tucker the same money he would get with Philadelphia after the tax. He chose to go to Philadelphia. You can't fix stupid. You just can't, okay? 
So we couldn't bring P.J. Tucker back and get Kevin Durant. We could have brought P.J. Tucker back by giving him the full mid-level exception, but it would have put us over the luxury tap so we couldn't go after Durant. So this Heat fan that talks shit about us not, not getting Durant is the same Heat fan that's an idiot that doesn't understand that the only reason why we could have gone for Durant is by letting P.J. Walker walk, okay? P.J. Tucker walk, excuse me. Hello, okay? The same Heat fan. Now, yeah, we struck out with Kevin Durant. I get that, but things don't always work your way, okay? It just doesn't, okay? Now, the same Heat fan says, oh, you should have traded Tyler, what the hell, you should have traded Tyler Hero for Donovan Mitchell. Well, we tried, okay? Let's not forget who runs Utah. Danny Ainge does not like Pat Riley. Didn't look good from the beginning, but we tried, okay? Now, the same, now, but they're still mad. Oh, but what the fuck? Um, we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. We didn't get anybody this offseason. Look at Mal the Marcus Audrey. Look, look at Carmelo Anthony. Guys, Pat Riley knows that these guys are available. If he didn't bring them here, there's a reason why. Not everybody can fit with this Miami Heat culture. Okay? And for those of you fans that are saying the Heat did not do anything this offseason, I need to stop and take a moment and breathe. Because... For you people, for you bandwagon fans, for you people that don't understand how this works, let me take a breath, let me relax, and let me explain to you why the Heat had a great offseason. We didn't sign anybody new, but we brought back players that made noise. We brought back Victor Oladipo at a very friendly contract. I, don't, I, I can't believe that nobody is praising Pat Riley for bringing Victor Oladipo back on a two-year, $18 million contract, okay? That, that's a, a friendly-ass discount. Then he brings back Caleb Martin, who had a breakout season last year. Brings back Dwayne Dedman in a, in a tradable, friendly contract. Okay? So right there, the Miami Heat have made moves. Now, you're bringing back Victor Oladipo. Guys, we talked about this before. Victor Oladipo, who is coming back for the first time in a fully healthy season with the Heat. We traded for this guy almost about two years ago. We have not gotten the production value that we traded for. We will get it this year. Okay? We're getting Caleb Martin, who's going to step into a bigger role. Caleb Martin, who got his money, who's young, poised, ready to break out. Okay? And then we have this beautiful coaching system, Eric Spolstra, okay? You got all these guys that are poised and that know how to make these players better. You got these young guys coming from the G League, guys like Orlando Robinson, Miles Garrett, you got all, excuse me, Marcus Carey, you got all these guys that are stepping up that can plug into a system. You got this new rookie, Nikola Jovic, that we just signed, this 6'11 phenom that's got a beautiful jump shot. You don't know what you're going to get out of him. This is the coaching staff, you guys, that make players better. Damn it, we prove it all the time. Max Truce, Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robinson, Caleb Martin, for God's sakes. This was a team that we were out, our star players, but we just kept winning. But nobody wants to give us the credit because we lost P.J. Tucker? We're not the, we're not the same team we were last year? Get the hell out of here. I don't believe that for a second, all right? And then let's not forget, not just the great coaching staff that we have, we have an even better front office staff, you guys. Okay? It ain't over. Miami will make a deal. Now, whether that happens before the season start, whether that happens during the season, it depends. In December, January, we're going to have some contracts that we signed this offseason that are going to open up. And remember, you guys, we see this every year in the NBA. Every year, disgruntled players get bought in out. The Miami Heat team are the only team that still have money left on our mid-level exception. Hello. We still got $4 million on both our mid-level exception and our biannual exception. You listening to me now? So what does that mean? When one of these disgruntled players gets bought in out and they're available, Miami Heat can offer more than a minimum contract. Hello. So it's not over. And let's not forget Duncan Robinson's very tradable $18 million contract just sitting there that we can trade to get a starting power forward. The reason why we haven't pulled the trigger yet, you guys, is because Miami is about patience. That's why we have one of the greatest front office is because we make the right decision. Now, for these fans that say that Miami doesn't do anything, that we haven't done anything since LeBron, not true. We signed Jimmy Butler. We got Jimmy Butler to come here when we had no cap space. Did the same thing with Kyle Lowry. Okay? So just because we didn't get Kawhi Leonard and Kevin Durant doesn't mean we don't make moves. Moves are coming. 
may not be the big moves that you think, but it is the moves that make this team better. Okay? Miami always makes deals that make this team better. Like 2020, when we traded Justice Winslow, and we ended up getting Iguodala and Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder, who broke out in this team. Okay? Expect that to happen this year. Expect Miami to make a deal that's going to make us better. Okay, but let's not forget to the fact that the dogs that we have coming back. This team is poised and ready. You got Jimmy Butler who proved without a shadow of a doubt that he's a top 10 player. Bam Adebayo playing with a chip on his shoulder, coming back for defensive player of the year. I need you to play like Chris Bosh in the offensive end. I need you to step up. Tyler Hero, all that shit being talked about him. Winning six men of the year. People saying that he's just a boy wonder. He's just a bubble fraud. He's got something to prove. You got Victor Oladipo and Kyle Lowry coming back from injury. They got something to prove. Then you got these dogs. Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, Caleb Barton, Omar Yurtsevin, Duncan Robinson, Dwayne Dedman, Hayward Highsmith. All these guys that are just waiting for their number to be called. And when their number's called, they will do damage. So for you bandwagon fans or heat haters that say that we're going to be a bottom six team, you know where to go. That ain't Miami Heat basketball. We're going to step up, we're going to do it good, and we're going to do what we always do best, and that is win. And if you don't like that, well then tough, y'all, because that's Miami Heat basketball, and that's enough said. I want to... Thank you guys so much for listening to this video. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know... Do you think that we are a bottom level team? Maybe because we didn't make these trades, we're not as good as I say. Or do you think the Miami Heat are going to do what we always do? Listen to all that negativity and turn it to a positive. Let me know your thoughts on Kyle Lowry, you guys. Let me know your thoughts on the Miami Heat this year. I want to thank you guys for listening to me. Thank you so much for the love and support. And until next time, your boy Ernest out. That's enough said.